One of the most fun things about making games is learning new stuff, but unfortunately one of the most painful things about making games is learning new stuff. Today we're going to be taking a stab at multiplayer. I've never made an online multiplayer game before, but we're going to get it working or I'll be really sad. Now as a quick refresher, here's the game pitch for my weird goblin game. It's called Clean Up on Isle Goblin and is about an island of goblins that are being attacked by humans for the island's resources. The player starts in the wreckage of their old town and needs to fight off the humans, rebuild the town, keep the NPCs happy, and restore the messed up island. The game is top down, kind of like Stardew but that's where the similarity ends. The world is fully destructible and will be procedurally generated each time you play. Whoa there you say, procedurally generated, it's just gonna look like mindless generated garbage. Well, don't worry. Luckily since we're generating at the start when you make an island, kinda like Terraria, we can do multiple passes and add in areas that are pre-made. I want you all to know that I won't rest until the island feels unique and interesting, since that was a concern in the previous video. But anyways, one of the first things I did before going on a multiplayer extravaganza was change up some of the art. It started when I didn't like these trees being so short. They're barely taller than the player, and there are simply too many of them. They need to be bigger. I made them take up more squares and made them much larger. I may have also gotten a little carried away and changed up the grass and the rocks a bit. I also took these boring wood walls with the weird black center and made them look more like something that might be used as an actual wall. They look a bit fancy now, but it's a start. I also changed up these rocks and, well, we go from this old style to this new one. I'm not totally sold yet, but it was quick and I want to give it a go. We need more tree variety too, they all look the same, but you get the idea. Now that that's done, we can get cranking on multiplayer. The only question is where to start. I did some very academic and in-depth research to discover that Unity's netcode for game objects is a pretty solid multiplayer platform and I downloaded all the things. The first challenge was to get it to connect. I set up this really janky main menu where one player can click host and the other can click join. Once the join code is entered, the connection begins. Next comes a tough challenge. How do we send over these huge maps to the player who joins? There are about 3 megabytes of map data, but we can only send messages that are 65 kilobytes. I won't bore you with the details, but I had to pack all the tile data very carefully into 64-bit variables and send them over in packets. Here you can see the joining player receiving the packets, then constructing the map. So now the world is on both computers, as you can see, and I made it so that when the player moves on one PC, it moves on the other. But now comes another roadblock, and this one is quite a challenge. It's something that Stardew Valley actually didn't bother to fix, so here it is. What do we do when someone destroys a block? I'll lay out the issue quickly. The host is the master, and if the maps ever get messed up between everyone, we trust the host. So when someone wants to remove a block, they have to request the change to the host, who then declares it to everyone else. But the problem is, it takes 100 milliseconds, aka a tenth of a second, for that request to be responded to over the internet. This seems fast, but it might as well be an eternity. The player will have damaged a block, be waiting around, only for the block to explode 10 frames too late. Trust me, you notice. One way around this is to have the block explode immediately on the client's computer as soon as the client breaks it, before the host even knows about it. This is what Stardew does, but it leads to some issues when two people break a block at the same time. See for yourself. When two people break a block within 100 milliseconds or so, there isn't enough time for one of the breaks to go to the server, get approved, and show up on the other computer. So both people break it and get an item. Again, I won't bore you with the details, but I essentially made it so if this happens to us, an invisible ghost pulls the extra item from the slower person's inventory to keep things fair. This is a good example of multiplayer making a game much more complex. A simple destroy block operation that took 10 lines of code now takes almost 300 for all this nonsense. Some parts of the game get much more complex, so make sure you know what you're getting into if you ever want to make a game have multiplayer. Anyways, on with the show. I didn't have combat before, so I added it in now. I started with a sword like this, where it swings slowly, but after testing a bit, I think I like this more slashy one, where you jerk forward a bit. I also decided that I wanted the game to be centered around dodge rolls. There are kinda two camps here of dodge-based games. Bullet hell games, where you're trying to dodge insane amounts of projectiles, and more precise melee games, like Hades, where there are of course projectiles, but not nearly as much as something like Enter the Gungeon. I lean a bit more towards combat from Hades, but I wouldn't mind some areas being saturated with things to dodge, so either way, I like the dodge roll and I think it's a solid move going forward. I went ahead and added a bow and arrow as well where you can charge up the shot and depending on how much you charge, the arrow will shoot different distances. Now comes another big part of the game, NPCs. These were very tricky. In most games like this, the developer will pre-make locations for the NPC to visit. For example, in Stardew Valley, you know exactly where each NPC will be by looking at the wiki. The developer handmade hundreds of meeting locations and dialogues for each one, but since my world is generated, I cannot do this since I don't know where each location will be. And I don't want to do something like Terraria, where the NPCs just kind of wander around. I want them to feel alive, like they have their own schedules. I came up with a solution I really like, but before we dive into that, I've got a word from our wonderful sponsor for today's video, Southern New Hampshire University. I spent a few days looking for game development jobs this week and found that I was having trouble landing interviews. My resume just lists electrical engineering junk, and it's hard to convince people that I'm good at programming without a six hour technical interview. To put it simply, I'm not a safe hiring option, and I think I could benefit from a CS or game development degree. I think if I could go back in time, I'd do something like that instead, and as far as schools go, SNHU sounds like a pretty sweet deal. 
They're accredited, so your degree won't be useless. They're non-profit, so it won't cost you your life savings. And the degrees are online, so you can stay in your warm, comfy cave. You also don't need to move to New Hampshire to go there because, let's be real, who would want to do that? They have courses covering programming, physics, graphics and interface design, basically everything you need so you don't have to learn it all on your own. The courses are, of course, led by industry professionals, so you'll get some wonderful connections, which are probably the most important part. If this sounds interesting at all, there's a link in my description below, so feel free to check that out. Okay, back to the NPCs. Here's the plan. We'll make each NPC a schedule that looks something like this. They'll have a list of times throughout the day where they could be at different places. Then we can give them a list of meetings, each with requirements. So for example, at noon on Thursdays, this NPC would go to the beach. But if the bar has already been built and there's an empty chair, they'll go to the bar. If the fountain has been built, they may go to the fountain instead. So I got all this working and we now have a schedule with different locations depending on the time of day. It's kind of like Stardew's system, but the NPCs will unlock more locations as you build more stuff. Now we just need to make the NPC actually follow these schedules. This was a bit challenging at first. Our old lady NPC thought she could walk through walls, but I eventually got it to work. I then added dialogue, where you can click on an NPC to talk to them. Don't be alarmed that this old hag looks so youthful up close, it's just an old portrait that I'm using as a placeholder. Also, now seems as good a time as any, don't forget to wander over and hit the subscribe button so you can see the next update when I post it. We've also got a Discord and a Steam page that desperately needs updating, so feel free to check them out and maybe wishlist. Anyways, here's where I wanted to do something unique. Normally in games like this, NPCs are befriended by giving them gifts. This is very transactional, and I've always hated it. Real friendship is made by spending time with someone, not by giving them the same gemstone every Tuesday. So I made it so the longer you stand by an NPC, the more friendship you get. I'm just kidding, that would be stupid. I made it so you can ask an NPC to follow you and they'll hang out with you for the rest of the day. Maybe if they're into fishing, they'll fish alongside you. If they're into fighting, they'll help you fight. Depending on what you do with them, they may enjoy it or hate it. I made it so NPCs can be bold and charge forward to fight, or be shy and only attack if they have to. It's really fun to have them follow you around and watch your back, and I'm excited to have them forage, fish, and do other activities once I implement those. I also threw together this menu where to list all the NPCs and their friendship levels so you can keep an eye on it. I got all this to reflect over multiplayer too, and with that, multiplayer is done. The bones are there, and now whenever I add a new feature, I'll just have to make sure it's multiplayer friendly. I think it was much easier than I expected, but I also think someone should wait until they're quite experienced before trying this on their own, because it can get really messy really fast. But with that everyone, we've reached the end of our changes. If you'd like to leave a comment with things you'd like to see, I do read every single one, so feel free to slap something down there or over in the Discord. Thanks again for dropping by, and I will see you all next time. Hello everyone, the time has come to shout out our eternally gracious patrons. I'd like to give a super special shout out to our Goblin Deity patrons for February 2023, namely Zachary Neese, Zach Fox, Sarah, Charfil, Riley Smith, Clinton Barr, Brett Hudson, Jackson Singleton, Matthew Spencer, Jace, Joseph Scobby, Megan Palmer, and Samantha Fullen. You're all amazing and I appreciate all of the support. 